Down in a physically distanced way, may we pass the peace to one another. May the peace of the Lord be with you. God bless you. Oh. 
absolves. He absolves in a powerful way. He doesn't accuse us. He absolves peace to you. This is about the grace of God. This account is from a clinical pastoral education student. Many years ago, they were on call at night. It's something taken in seminary. I had a similar thing that I had to take when I was in seminary. But this person was on call at a hospital. It was 3 a.m. and the minister got paged. The person was just very agitated, totally agitated. And they went to their bedside. And immediately they said, I'm a minister, would you pray with me? And the minister responded and said, let's pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The minister reported that when they said the Lord's Prayer together, the change in the person just went from total agitation to a, to a peace that passed all understanding. Like in our call to worship, amidst all the circumstances of life, particularly in our pain and difficulty, our Lord wants to give us a peace that passes understanding. The most powerful message of the resurrection that is repeated over and over again. Peace be with you. Very undeserving, but very powerful and very engendered by our Lord. Peace be with you. Second half. There's a miracle. And it's a miracle out of a mess. A scourging. The scourging that Jesus went through. That alone could kill you. A whip with pieces of bone and metal. They said when somebody was scourged, you could even see through to their intestines. Our Lord went through that. And then the cross. I remember in in, in, in seminary, uh, Dr. Ron Sider, I, I remember this plain as day, somebody said, do you think he was really dead? And the professor said, I said well, they ran a spear through him. Yeah, he was really dead. What our Lord went through. I, about a month ago, or a month and a half ago, I went, there's a, something called an Association of Ministers with Disabilities. I figured maybe I should connect with them. The one thing I remember from this Zoom conference is they noted in this Association of Ministers with Disabilities that our Lord shows his scars. He's big on it. Check it out. Put your finger here, Thomas. Look, look, look at this. He doesn't paper over them. He says, I have scars. I am here. Have you anything, have you got anything to eat? And he eats in front of him. The risen Jesus is real. What he has done is real. The scars prove that it's a victory with cost. And 
He doesn't cover them up. You know, I remember the line, turn your scars into stars. And our Lord does a great example with that. By his stripes we heal. I have shared the work of Jesuit priest Greg Boyle has one of the largest gang ministries in the world, Homeboy Industries, Los Angeles. He tells the story of Jose, a young man from the streets. When Jose was six years old, his mother told him to kill himself because no one wanted him. Can you imagine a mother doing that? When he was nine, she abandoned him to an orphanage, but his grandmother went and got him out of there. But his grandmother beat him brutally. It's no wonder that when Jose grew up, he ended up uh, drugs and gangs, and he ended up in prison, which Jose said was about the best thing that could have happened to him. Because when he was in prison, he heard about the good news of Jesus Christ. That he died on the cross for his sins and to give Jose a chance, a new chance at life. To take away our sins to give us new life. As Jose told Father Greg about his background, he showed some of his scars. Because scars left behind by his childhood beatings and his drug use and rough living. And since he found Jesus, Jose was no longer ashamed of his scars. As he said, how could I help other wounded people if I do not make friends with my wounds? How can I help other wounded people? If I did not make friends with my wounds, as the Bible says, comfort others with the comfort that we receive. There's a message. Peace be with you. There's a miracle out of a terrible mess called the cross. If you take one thing today, God can bring miracles out of messes. God can bring miracles out of messes. And the third thing, there's a mission. A powerful mission. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from dead, uh, the dead on the third day. Verse 47, that repentance. You know, sometimes all we say is forgiveness of sins, but there's repentance. And repentance is just a fancy word. It means to turn to God. It means to seek to want to do it God's way, not your way or my way. That repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. There was a judge in Fairfax County, Virginia. Landlord-tenant disputes. He would hear like a hundred of these on a typical Friday. But before him, there was this deaf couple and their landlord. And the landlord was furious. These deaf people in his apartment owed him money. But something about this bugged the judge. And he just he asked for a 10 minute recess. And he went into his chambers and he came back and the judge in Fairfax County, Virginia had cash. And he handed the cash to the landlord and said, consider it paid. In that day, that deaf couple were able to stay in their place. And that was a special day in that landlord tenant. Consider it paid. What beautiful words. Consider it paid. Kind of like what Jesus says on the cross. To tell us that it is finished. A dynamic equivalent translation of that means paid in full. The 
sins of the world. There's a message, peace to you. Right in the middle of the mess we're in. Because out of the messes, God brings miracles. Praise his name. And there's a mission that repentance and forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed because of what Jesus has done. What will living a resurrected life be like in your life? The risen Jesus is real. He wants us to be real. So how do you be real? You need two things, grace and truth. You will not survive without grace. You will not grow without truth. Satan has truth. He's called the accuser of the brethren. Lord, we love you and we need you. We 
love you and we need you. And Lord, we thank you for the message today. Peace to you. That you're with us right where we are today. Whatever that means for anyone and everyone here. Thank you, Lord, for your message of peace in your resurrection. Thank you, Lord, that you brought a miracle out of the mess of the cross. In fact, it is written in your scripture, by your stripes we're healed. And Lord, thank you that you want us to be a part of a mission. A mission of repentance and forgiveness of sins. We love you and we need you. Bless our hearts, our homes, your church. And wherever you have us. It's in your name we pray. While others that are calling do not pass us by. In your name we pray. Well, God's people said, Amen. Amen.